Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this, is, this lecture is the fifth in a seven-part series presented by the Broward College North Campus Fine Art Department, and it's funded through North Campus Student Life. I encourage you to mark your dates for the next talks on your calendar. Uh, the next ones are Tuesday, March 19th, and Wednesday, April 24, at 6.30 p.m., same location. Is this volume okay with everybody? Yes? Okay. <laughs> I just got a new microphone, so just check it. <laughs> Our speaker tonight is James Brutus. Uh, James earned his BFA degree at the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan, and he relocated to Miami in 2009. James has created illustration for newspapers and magazines, and such work has been seen in the Michigan View, Chicago Tribune, among others, as well as for private clients. He has exhibited in several galleries throughout Detroit and Chicago, and Florida as well, of course. You can currently see several of his paintings in the Black History Month exhibit at the downtown campus of Broward College. James, yeah, just opened tonight, actually. Uh, James works with inks, acrylics, oils, and digital art, focusing primarily on painting and portraiture. These figurative pieces seek to contemplate issues such as war and peace, questions of nature, of the nature of beauty, and the age-old human longing for perfection. As James mentions in his artist statement, we seek the quest for the intangible force known to our dreams, our desires, our nightmares and downfalls, and our motivations to live. So please join me in welcoming James Brutus. Hello, everyone. How are you doing this evening? Um, I'm James. Uh, the series has been pretty good to uh, not only to me, to other artists. Uh, thank you, Lisa, uh, for everything. And also, uh, Robert, uh, much needed in the college. I know the program here is, is not that strong and not that uh, big, but uh, it's good to have our artists come in and visit and just to, just to explain what's going on in our community. Um, I, I was born and raised here in Miami. Uh, I just moved back three years ago. Uh, while I was gone, I I took a degree, a bachelor degree in uh, illustration, and I uh, got a minor degree in fine art. Before I, I accomplished my, my my dream, which is uh, to graduate from college, uh, my family was enthused. Uh, friends was happy also. The first one in the family to uh, graduate college. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I, while I was uh, at CCS, uh, the illustration program taught me a lot. Uh, it taught me a whole lot of uh, technical and researching and gathering information and uh, trying to get the viewers and audience to uh, uh, try to get the viewers and audience to. Uh, try to get the audience to engage with art, to understand the message, to uh, um, um, to drift yourself in the imagination of through the artist's mind. My I'm trying to pull up my college. Uh, I had my early college and also post undergrad. Um, this is 
during my uh, um, my minor uh, department, my minor degree department, which is the fine art department. Um, I, I use uh, paper bags, glue them together, and did charcoal on top of this. And this pieces, these two pieces are, I would say, a good six feet by uh, three feet. Very large. Um, I like it as a scroll uh, because it floats uh, when it dangles against the wall when people pass the wall, uh, pass by too. It plays like a uh, like an old ancient paper, um, but I'm just like reintroducing it into uh, art. Uh, it was very fun working with it. Uh, I posed for each of uh, uh, both pieces. I got a lot of uh, excitement. Uh, throughout the school about these pieces because you can notice these far away, about 50, 100 feet away. I began doing portraits, um, acrylics, oils, wash, watercolor. For some reason, uh, portraits, um, they, I relate to portraits more. Um, like you can see the um, expression um, on the person's face, the gestures, uh, the body gestures uh, that the person would do, um, even the colors. Um, daytime um, brings out the brightness of people. Um, the evening kind of grayish kind of gives you a more detail. So that would um, brought me along with working with a lot of bright colors. I love working with colors. Uh, I knew that my talent was where it was supposed to be. Now, um, at the college stage, I was trying to find um, what uh, a lot of the instructors were telling me, uh, your story, your journey, uh, throughout your art. Didn't really understand what, was, uh, what that meant. I, I thought that if I can do a pretty picture, um, Render it pretty nicely, use some bright colors, uh, I'll be fine. But uh, there's, there has to be a direction uh, whenever you go on work with um, um, art pieces. Whether it's uh, painting, sculpture pieces, video, animation. Um, during my college days, I experimented with a lot of different techniques, a lot of different styles. Uh, do you notice I have like this flatter technique? which I kind of got influenced by, um, sorry, Jackson Pollock. Um, Pollock was unusual, um, his work was unusual. Um, the abstract uh, world was unusual to me. Uh, I didn't really fully understand it. I kind of like uh, brushed off against it until I started to study um, artists that, you know, uh, some of the work that I, I was kind of in, uh, into. Uh, Ian Rivera, Frida Kahlo, Jackson uh, Pollock, this is all grad, uh, undergrad. A lot of the work are done on, like this piece right here is done on paper. I washed the color acrylic over the paper, uh, about two or three coats. And then on top of that, I used Conte, chalk, pastels to bring out the image. Just playing around with a lot of uh, dark and uh, uh, light uh, uh, techniques, contrast. While I was undergrad, I, I decided to uh, give back some of my knowledge of, in art uh, to local communities. So I started to um, do volunteer work at some communities, helping the kids out with some paintings. Um, they just got out of school. It was the last day of school, and they were super excited that, that they had to do their last project before they went to a uh, uh, Christmas break. So they had a good time. Uh, while I was in college, I discovered oils for the first time. Uh, my junior year of college, I started to work with oils for the very first time, uh, and uh, I loved it. 
And once I started doing oils, I just took off with it. I would go back and forth with uh, acrylics to oils, but uh, oils was my thing. Oils, uh, uh, I could wait longer to, uh, to go back into the piece, redo certain sections, or go back to adjust uh, certain postures or colors, just rework, rework. This is a friend of mine, McCann, with him. Um, told him to pose. He decided to look from the distance. I uh, took a photo. I uh, took the photo back home and decided to do a portrait. And I had so much fun working with this picture. I like classroom settings, after the school programs. Uh, sketchbooks. I'm really big on sketchbooks. Uh, this is a watercolor on a sketch on my, in my sketchbook. During 2000, 2012, well, I would say 2000 to 2004, I was really into uh, foreign affairs, um, predominantly in uh, the Middle East. For some strange reason, I, I, my, my heart uh, went there um, because there is a, a story that has not been told here in the United States. Um, a lot of stories are really sad. And so I, I started to read some of uh, the uh, life experience of uh, uh, a lot of little girls and boys who's been through uh, wartime. Um, just documenting uh, certain battle uh, ground areas, uh, to see how people are coping in those areas. Uh, so it, uh, that series of uh, work will pop up later on. Um, I also, while I was in school, I decided I, uh, well, I wanted to play around with uh, the commercial world. Since I was in the illustration department, I figured, well, I, I need to uh, polish up my uh, skin, my talent, and also research my field and see what's out there, how my work would help uh, the art community. How can I uh, contribute in our community through my work? Uh, and illustration was uh, something that uh, I was into uh, at the moment. Another part of the series. My style was really, I would say, realistic. But I was battling between uh, the abstraction uh, field and to the hyper-realistic world. And how can I uh, combine them together? I didn't want to be categorized as a realism, uh, realism uh, 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 painter. And I didn't want to categorize as an abstraction uh, artist. So I, I bounced around between doing realism and doing abstraction and see how that works together playing around with composition so I can address the uh, storyline. It's a nice little action pose here. This is a graphite on paper and charcoal and chalk. Um, this piece took me a, a while to work on. It's 18 by 24. Um, I laid graphite all throughout the paper, um, smeared it right on, and started drawing onto the paper. I laid the paper against the wall. The wall has a, a nice little uh, a ruffle texture to it, which I kind of like. And I used a kneaded eraser. Um, the white areas are the kneaded erasers, just pulling away from the graphite. And the dark areas I, I add on the color pencil. Uh, and the very, very bright white are just the white chalk. This was my senior wall. Um, wasn't really excited. I was happy I was done, but I wasn't really excited about, about my collection of work I had on, on the wall. It was, uh, it was, it was too, it was too commercial for me. Uh, even though I was going, I was 
speaking, going into the commercial uh, world. But at the same time, it has a like a contemporary feel to it. So it was it was leaving me with a lot of questions, and that's why I was uh, um, I'm pleased about the um, wall. But uh, uh, questions leads to answers, leads to more questions and more answers. So, but I, I put up my collection of um, uh, pieces for that final year, and I uh, got a little uh, uh, a review um, back from it, and a lot of people uh, enjoyed my work. I was ready. I was ready for the outside world. Before I graduated,
right side, this is off the viewer uh, viewing uh, the uh, picture here. On the right side, uh, there's a park, and behind us is Interstate uh, 75. And so this was a, it was a great spot for everyone on the highway to, to take a look. And we had we had to make sure it's uh, something positive, positive and also pleasant to look at. Well, uh, this project was supposed to, I asked to make the project was supposed to take at least two weeks, but it ended up stretching three months. Um, I, every day I was always arguing. It's like, we're not in the clock time. Everyone, they, you know, these guys are were pretty lazy. Um, they wanted to hang out, to take breaks, um, joke around. We had uh, a lot of visitors uh, that would pass by. Um, normally, uh, homeless people, they wouldn't bother us. Uh, they loved the fact that we were um, painting on these walls and they love the colors. So they just left us alone, but asked a lot of questions. This is my first time ever doing a mural this size. Um, after doing this mural, I start to look at the other graffiti artists um, that uh, are doing murals and have been doing murals. Uh, I was never into uh, graffiti until I had finished doing, uh, doing this project. I live in uh, Right now in Miami, I live in the city of uh, Opelaka. Um, my influences at this time are abandoned buildings. The reason why is because of uh, the experience I had that summer doing that mural. I went out and ventured out throughout Detroit, some by foot, some by bus or by bike, bicycle. And I noticed a lot of abandoned buildings. Uh, a lot of burned down buildings, uh, not only in Detroit, Chicago, and Miami. This is in Miami. And uh, for some strange reason, the facade, the, the structure, the neglect of these abandoned or torn down buildings um, kind of pleases my eyes. And I was just wondering, you know, how can I uh, take something like this and incorporate it into my work? Uh, some of the environments throughout the city kind of energized me too. This is in Chicago. Some of the landscapes, especially in Detroit. This is in Detroit. Nice and uh, dreary. Detroit was always gray. Gray and dirty, but I love Detroit. If I can move back there right now, I'll move. Um, because the people were so, so united, because they knew the situation they were in. Um, they look out for each other and, uh, and had this hope, 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 of, hope of change. That's half of the stadium. That's the old, that's the old Tiger Stadium. So the decay, the rottenness of uh, uh, some of the buildings and uh, uh, around the area, um, I, I started to, uh, you know, I started to document um, the rest of the uh, chain, broken windows, uh, broken concrete. I was all, in, I was really into it. Board up windows. This is this are ruin. Um, I'll say the last year I was in Detroit, there was a fire that uh, broke out at storage uh, unit uh, area, and it uh, took out about I'll say a good six block stretch. 
of uh, storage units. So every, everyone lost everything. So he had stuff in there, he lost everything. So I was wandering through the debris, looking at old albums, uh, people uh, held on to um, wine bottles, empty wine bottles, cars, clothes, of course. So the, uh, the buildings around me was influenced uh, influence in uh, my work. And my uh, my thirst for the arts, and uh, then I start to look at other arts. I started out with start out with the uh, Edgar Degas. I love his colors. Um, I, I wasn't sure about the ballerinas, but uh, his colors was great. Uh, Norman Rockwell, uh, I went to a show, it's not a picture. Uh, Nikolai Fashion, a German uh, um, painter. Uh, I love his stuff, even though I hadn't seen any of his art. Uh, the reason why I love his work is because his canvas was so open, it was almost like potato sacks. He didn't prime it, he didn't gesso it. He kept it open, and he would squeeze out half of his tubes, tubes about this long, and squeeze out half of his paint, his oils. And it would make these huge brush stroke marks. And each mark defines something. And each mark kind of contours the human form. Uh, very loose and uh, um, distorted in the background, colors, but heavy and paint. Uh, Nikolai Feshin, F-E-C-H-I-N. Uh, his museum is in uh, Arizona, uh, sorry, New Mexico. Um, this work is beautiful. Uh, the, the face was highly rendered. And then you had these distorted, almost abstract background, but you can tell what's going on. She's sick. Um, Jenny Seville, another artist I was looking at. Her colors are gorgeous. Uh, swoon. A lot of, I started to look at a lot of graffiti artists, especially the outdoor stencil, aerosol artists. Um, the work is very, is very powerful. Dynamic. Charles White, a lot of political movement uh, uh, on pieces, very powerful uh, uh, figures, bold uh, contour and bold uh, contrast. So I kind of Banksy, of course, his message is really strong. High Vajra, contrast, high contrast, really powerful figures. Chuck Close, very vibrant colors. So I took all I can from them and tried to incorporate it in my work. But before I end up doing it, uh, doing my own work, I started doing freelances, freelance work. Show me these commands. Yeah, I guess I forgot it. I, I, I was woken up one in the morning by an instructor. He, he does cartoons for a living. Uh, very uh, charismatic, very energetic guy, um, Dave Chow. 
He uh, called me up. He told me I got uh, I got this art director on the line who wants me to do a, uh, a portrait of a producer slash director for a Western uh, that um, done uh, Western movies. Um, but I don't know how to do portraits, and you you're my guy. And you know, I told Dave, it's like Dave, I you know I, I, I'm not really experienced. In a magazine, and also uh, the deadline is too short. He gave me two days to work on it. So, uh, after a few minutes of convincing me to do it, um, I uh, I got the image from him via email, and I began to work on it. Um, I quickly did it. And it, uh, it uh, kind of gave me an idea of the illustration world. Um, very fast paced, um, the demand is really high, and uh, you have to go through a lot of revisions. So I did the piece, um, day and a half, sun it, and came out in a magazine. I said, oh, this is great. I got a cover of a magazine. I said, I was really happy. Um, showed my parents. It's like, see, you know, you can do something with art. Uh, but uh, the, the great thing about doing this first, this is my first magazine cover. Uh, the great uh, thing about uh, uh, doing uh, this piece here is not only the time it took uh, to work on it, but also some of the information is the uh, resources you have to go through to uh, uh, create, create a message of this guy. He's a producer slash director, very powerful in the Western uh, community, Western uh, movie community. Uh, so I had, uh, I, had, I had a lot of questions I had to ask. Uh, I told Dave, can you please talk to someone about it? Um, and answer my questions. So I was able to kind of understand who was this person and how can I uh, have other people understand this person just through one image. In Chicago, um, Rob Bogorovich. Now, I, the, the weird thing about uh, this whole piece, a month before um, the whole story broke out, I uh, I met him at this four-star restaurant. I was really upset. That was the same day that the price went up on fares for the uh, the train, and it was because of him. And I saw saw him passing, and you know he waved. I didn't wave back. I was still pissed about the two-dollar fare. Um, and he's like, "Isn't this a beautiful day?" And I was like, "Yeah, for you." Um, I had to take the train. I told him that. Then the story broke out. And I was like, wow, well, this is a great story. I had to do something. Um, oh, yeah. Well, the story is I went through a numerous of the uh, images, put them up, um, tried to study the fe feature features of both. Uh, of uh, individuals. And so I created the piece, and uh, at first I thought, you know, this is a great piece to put in my portfolio. But then I said, well, it would be a great piece to send to Chicago Tribune. Why not? I was told never, ever send an original piece to a client. Never, ever. I didn't listen. I was, I was hoping if I send this image, someone's going to call me and, I, and I'm, my image is going to be on the on, uh, paper. So I signed it two weeks past, no phone call, and I said, well, I lost my image. I guess they warned me for a reason. I got that, I got a phone call in the middle of the day, said, well, um, hi, we got your, um, your painting. Can we use this for our story? Uh, in the Chicago Tribune, they said, yeah, perfect, great. I 
so excited that uh, here is my first newspaper. It was, uh, it was on, on Wednesday's paper, but you know, at the same time, I, mean, I, I said, hey, I call it all my friends up. I moved to Chicago, and finally I got, I, I got a little break uh, in the freelance gig. Um, but this was my first freelance gig, and this was my last freelance gig in Chicago. Um, I did, well, as far as professional, I did a bunch of uh, local um, logos, t-shirts, designs, and so on. But as far as in the major uh, illustration on field in Chicago, um, this was my brand. So I was pretty pleased about it. So since I've uh, accumulated a certain style of doing captures, I started doing uh, captures. So I change up my style just to um, um, gain some experience. I also worked on a, uh, a mural um, graffiti piece with a friend of mine. It's my first uh, graffiti piece. I am not going to do a graffiti piece because I have grown up doing graffiti and these guys are amazing. But what they can do with a spray can. Um, the project came out pretty good. So I went. So I went back and forth um, um, doing freelance work, and now I'm starting to. So that, that came and went. So I went back to portraits. And then as I was doing the, uh, the portraits, I, I noticed that uh, some of my layering was getting really thick. And some of my uh, brush strokes are, are getting really loose. Getting really bold when working with different materials. This is a fabric on. Uh, this is a acrylic on fabric.
working with different uh, painting materials, oil, latex paint, latex indoor paint, um, some of the surfaces crack during the process. I kind of like that. It kind of has that uh, old concrete feel and look to it. And some of the images that I um, was gathering uh, kind of flows into my um, my work. So that's what earlier piece. Studio. This is what I look like when I when I came. Two pieces right now that's all, um, at Broward College, downtown, a Solis uh, location. On the 12th floor, the, uh, the conference room. Um, this, um, was one, this is one of the pieces that's in the show. I have uh, two pieces in there. I've been showing it uh, um, during this month at Broward College for three, three years now. Victor Grace is a really good curator. He gathers the artists to show work there. A lot of my work starts out with uh, really simple sketches. This is a sketch on sketchbook. Illustration, you have to do a thumbnail sketch, um, a rough sketch, uh, concept sketch, color count, concept. Color, come. Final sketch, final rough, and rough. So it goes in a series of sketches, series of uh, changing your images, and a uh, series of changing the color. And I was, I was tired of it. So now what I do is do a small little sketch like this, and then blow it up into a bigger paint. Save. Save some of that uh, time wasted doing and redoing sketches. Some of my concepts got uh, are pretty bold. Um, I, at this point, uh, this piece is done in 2010. Uh, at this point, I decide no longer do uh, to do illustrations. Um, it's not because I hate it. Uh, it's just the fact that uh, I start to enjoy um, showing work at galleries. I'm starting to enjoy uh, working in large scale and starting to uh, enjoy the freedom of uh, creating your own concept. Um, this piece, um, these are all models. Um, I'm not, all I know, this is me here. Um, I, the story behind this piece, uh, uh, my brother here. He had uh, three friends who were involved in the bank robbery. Um, they went through the Rail, uh, Dana, uh, Miami Gardens, all the way down to North Miami, all through all those counties, high, highway chase. Um, you have all the county um, police chasing them. You have two helicopters, and you have this helicopter. Um, and, and my brother's telling me this, and then it's like, well, <laughs> you know this guy, it's like, well, yes, I do know him, and uh, it's kind of sad that he's going to be going away for a long time. And I, we were joking around, and I, and I was, I told him, it's like, well, what if it's three, three guys that you are being chased, and, uh, one of them end up being the rat. If you're the officer, who out of, this, out of these three positions can you tell will be the rat? Guy in the middle? What about the guy on the left? Or what about the big guy on the right?
See, questions like that uh, uh, and coming up with concepts like this, um, I truly enjoy uh, because it, it, it leads you to, um, uh, to come up with different theories. Uh, this guy, he could be, he could be a rat, um, knowing that uh, he's, he has all the evidence in his pocket or knowing that one of his uh, friends is going to tell. I mean, he can you know, he looks like he's the ringleader leader here. He could be the uh, also the rat, or even the big guy. A lot of the big guys uh, tend to uh, squeal really quickly. Um, this piece is also at the, uh, the Las Olas location. Uh, last year, um, throughout the, uh, the whole story of uh, TM, Trev, uh, Terrence, uh, what, Trayvon Martin, um, I wanted to do a piece uh, um, related to that whole story. But I didn't want to uh, do a piece directly. I wanted to do a piece that's something that's like, really broad in general that everyone can relate to. Uh, so I, I look back on uh, a lot of uh, artists who dealt with the issues like that. Uh, Elizabeth Catholic, um, a Mexican-American uh, painter, also she uh, done uh, wood stones to print, uh, lived in Detroit. I saw an image of uh, one of the uh, side view of a woman's head and uh, in the inside was a child laying down. And I was like, well, I, I wanted to use the same image, uh, but I wanted to do it in my version. So taking the whole story that went on last year and uh, taking uh, uh, some of the influences I got through Elizabeth Catholic and then uh, taking some of my ideas and I came up with this piece. This is the current piece. Uh, this piece is done on uh, plexiglass. I've been wanting to work on plexiglass for years now. And the uh, reason why, please don't ask me, it, it, it's, it's different. Either there's no one that's working on plexi, and if they are, they're either working on the back of it, or they have a, a sheet over the image that they put on it. But I just wanted to treat it like a uh, regular canvas, so I did the image on top of the plexi. Exposing some of the plexi. So some of the plexi you can kind of see here. Uh, some of uh, some of it is being blocked off by the, uh, the paints. But uh, working with the layers, introducing some of the colors that uh, Andrew worked with, and then uh, uh, continue on with some of um, uh, the message. Um, the plexi piece came out really, uh, really good. Um, I was afraid that it may chip off, um, or worse, just uh, peel off. And it uh, a lot of trial and error, and it came out uh, came out really well. So I'm I'm, I'm working on a series of uh, uh, pieces on plexi right now as we speak, and um, they are all big. This is also a plexi piece. It's acrylic on plexi. Uh, from the back. Uh, from the back, you'll see my drawing outline, and you'll see the base color I use. So it becomes two pieces one time. Um, but the, if I were to display it in the center of uh, a room or a gallery, um, you'll see both sides of the image, which is something that I want to do in the future. Um, but for now, I want to keep it propped against the, uh, the wall. Um, I, the two big pieces I have right now, um, uh, they're at this gallery in Midtown right now, and we were at the uh, Art District area, uh, Gap Studio. Uh, they have those two pieces there displayed, so if anyone wanted to take a look at the plexi pieces, um, um, see me later on, and I can adjust. Um, a lot of my uh, strokes got bolder, um, loose, uh, color are still vibrant, um, Storyline is, is still gray, but at the same time, the colors kind of um, uh, 
make it pleasant in a way. Uh, I still love the decay of buildings, so I include that in my pieces. Another part of my studio, um, everywhere I work, it's, it's like this. Um, I'm not a messy person, but when it comes down to the art, the, I'm not really clean. <coughs> Paints all over the place. It's another piece. This is uh, oils, latex paint on canvas. This is before the plexi pieces. This is another plexi piece. So I mean, you can kind of see a little of my egg of the dog coming out into my pieces. Um, a lot of uh, the abstract uh, um, philosophies and techniques that I hated in the past, I now include it into my work. I'm still doing um, portraits, um, and my message are, um, it's, it's there. A lot of my paints are cracking, chipping off, but I control it. I can uh, add glue to it as needed. But uh, the reason why it's doing that is because I wanted to do that. Um, building is cracked, uh, paint chips, um, structure burns now, and I want to reflect that into my um, my, my painting strokes. So each color has their own texture and uh, roughness to it. But at the same time has the pleasant, has this pleasant color, pleasant feel to it. It was very hard for me um, um, starting doing art uh, professionally. I graduated in 04, so that was almost eight years ago. Um, but I've been actively working in uh, the art industry for seven and a half years, seven to seven and a half years. Um, there's points in my life that I was a little discouraged about what direction I, I wanted to go. Um, and then uh, there's a few points in my life where I, if I really wanted to do art. And um, while that was going on, I was still sketching my sketchbook. And so that, that was obvious that I do not want to quit art. I want to continue doing art. Um, and at the same time, um, how can I change the way I feel about art and also the way my work look uh, to uh, make me go so far in this industry? And to break away from realism and, and breaking into a little bit of abstraction is a big step for me. Um, I am so meticulous when it comes to portraits. Uh, I've spent hours and hours, countless hours on it. Uh, but to loosen up, to uh, uh, just be free on that, being really detailed, and it kind of, it's, it's a pleasant sight for me. So the surface, the colors, a lot of things I, I focus on. This is how that, uh, the plexi piece of being displayed. If, uh, three brackets against the wall, and I have a joint and a wire connecting to the plexi, which I have three holes on the top. And it's kind of projecting off the wall just enough that you can kind of see the shadows and kind of see through the paint.
Uh, the great thing about uh, being a creative person in general um, is you travel around uh, either in the world or in the United States and uh, you meet the other individuals that are doing the same thing that you're doing and striving for the same goal. And um, I was uh, fortunate enough that for this project, uh, there was a graffiti artist out in New York uh, happened to come down for, for Miami Basel. And he was working on a huge project. And I volunteered my, my time uh, to help him along with the mural. And here's the video of the project.
years, I, I really don't feel any pressure. Um, I, when, when I come up with some, some of my ideas, I just go about doing it. Uh, but I, I make sure I want to ask myself questions. Uh, how I want it to, to be read. And does it lead to uh, other questions? And that's the whole, uh, my whole thing, is to lead to other questions. Um, I haven't got any pressure of uh, doing some of the pieces with certain types of messages. Um, I was told uh, by a few people not to uh, tack into some of the uh, areas, um, but you know, really, I'm I'm the painter, and uh, whatever backlash uh, comes at me, I'll take it. It feels right. Yes.
Well, yeah, I, uh, there's like two different types of uh, visual artists. There's the ones who works uh, for reference, and there's the ones who uh, works through their head. And I envy the people who can work through their head. Uh, I do uh, work out of reference. At the same time, I love live models. So if I'm doing a really dynamic uh, pose or uh, a piece, uh, I like to have that uh, model right there in front of me so I can you know, get a few little extra uh, details here and there. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm working on trying to do both the reference and also work from the head. It's really difficult. It's like working, uh, if you're a right-handed uh, writer, and trying to write with your left. It's, 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 go ahead.
great designer. Um, hope and cherish the, cherish the moment you have when you're at. Uh, don't stress the real world. It's, it's going to come in regardless, so there's it's no need to stress for it. Um, but uh, if you can like just make friends in all different types of discipline, uh, when you get out there, you're going to be doing so, so many things. You're not just going to be uh, doing uh, what you're uh, focusing on in undergrad. You're, you're doing, I mean, I'm doing murals out of plastic tubes. And, and then uh, working with uh, people who, who are photographers, uh, working projects with them. Uh, I did a collaborative piece with a friend of mine who did test trial uh, in undergrad. And she right now is making dresses out of pigskin. So I did a collaborative piece with her. And we were trying to figure out how, how we're going to do a piece together. And I did painting, melted it out, she did her piece, and it came out together. And we had a show uh, with that piece. So it's, you know, don't, don't stress it. I mean, it's, it's uh, the, the art industry is really tough. I'm not gonna lie, it's really tough. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's about dedication and passion. Everyone's talented. If you're in an art uh, program, you're already talented. It, it takes that little extra, that passion. Yes. You were saying um, with the plexiglass, you weren't sure if the paint would adhere to it. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you did to prep the plexiglass before to make sure that the paint adheres? Or no. I did, uh, I cut up a lot of small pieces uh, of plexi, and I work with a lot of different materials. I did watercolor, acrylic, or wash, and let it sit there and pour water, and scratch it, just to see how it reacts to plexi. And uh, liquid, uh, the uh, latex paint and acrylic is uh, polymer based, and uh, plexi is a polymer base also, and it worked well together. Um, the only problem I, I uh, had, no, I had two problems. I had a uh, problem with the uh, varnish, which uh, I'm, I'm fixing right now, um, and uh, uh, layering. Now, working with the canvas, the paint takes up, uh, well, the, your, your, um, your paint is layered really thickly on the canvas, whereas in the black sea, it's really thin, because it's not, there's no tooth to take it. And so just working with more layers um, is something I need to uh, work on. Because the first layer will scratch right off. If I put a light little coat, I have to in the scratch and it comes off. But after two, three layers, it's not, not going to come off. And you pour water. It's still. I, I, I've been testing it just to see, you know, if a buyer buys some of my, one of my piece, that I know what's going to happen. You know, you have to be aware of how your piece is going to be hung and also how long it's going to last. So not a lot of buyers are going to buy pieces that's going to deteriorate within two years. So are you possibly being one of the pioneers in just making this a, another phase of art? Do you know anybody else in the country that is working strictly on well, the acrylic itself? There, there's a few, um, there's a few art, artists who are working on the acrylics. I'm not a pioneer. I mean, there's, there's I mean, look at society. We rip off each other. And so, um, so I'm, I'm sure there's someone out there that's already done what I've done, but I, I'm trying to do it in my way. Uh, there's, there are artists that I work, but they work in a different way. They either paint in the back or work in two layers. Uh, so they have um, that one layer painted in the front and then have uh, another plexi piece to protect it, which, you know, you got to expose it. Don't trap it. Oh, yes. Um, I do, yes, for the, those who are wondering. Um, I do have something else going on. I teach, uh, I teach, I teach a workshop at Michael's uh, in Oakwood uh, Boulevard, Oakwood Boulevard, uh, Michael's Arts and Crafts Store. Um, I also teach uh, uh, art in two community uh, locations, community centers in North Miami. Uh, one is on uh, 135th 
Thursday and the other is on 125th. Um, and so yeah, I'm, this is the reason why I can't contact me. It's really busy. Uh, yeah, so I have a full-time job uh, and then uh, doing the workshops and then try to squeeze in uh, into the arts. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? You were all your portraits um, for your, was it your presentation and your graduates. So oh, yeah. The, did you call them commercial and you didn't like them? Can you explain that? Well, they were, they were portraits of celebrities, and I didn't want to be that one artist. Or well, one of those artists that uh, does celebrity pieces. Um, So, yeah, I mean, you got, uh, and then I got, like, two friends that's on it. It, uh, the reason why I said that almost the commercial, it, it was just, like, almost too posh for me. At the same time, it has a certain, like, contemporary feel, uh, like a fine artsy feel to it. Um, and that's what, that was some of the issues in my last two years in college. People were, uh, a lot of my peers were like, well, where are you going? Illustration department. Oh, you done with us over here today? Um, so I had both of them fight each other, and that's that was the thing. They're uh, both fields were fighting each other, and uh, my style was, uh, wasn't really developed yet, and that was fighting each other, and so that's why I was unpleased. And at the same time, I didn't sleep for two days for that um, before the show on. So yeah, that was another part of it too. Yeah, 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 but if you're an undergrad, and I'm sure you guys do it too, you, all all nighters. Um, when, when you're working with a, a long, when you're working with a piece that takes a long process, uh, please plan plan ahead. Don't do the last minute. It will show, especially in this way. Thank you.